Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, we do our match reaction for England and Spain. Let's start with the first game, which got here is England 2, Slovakia 1. Shout out to Slovakia. I think Slovakia put up a admirable and incredible performance. And they were just a few minutes away from knocking out one of the tournament favorites in the round of 16. And guys, Slovakia were on the verge of getting the first ever win in the knockout stage because they would have been in the quarterfinals. They have never made it to the quarterfinals ever in their history for the Euros. So this would have been history in the making. Unfortunately for Slovakia, England late her work, saved the day. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about it. Because I look at the Southgate, I, I, so sorry, I look at the lineup Southgate put out there. It's the same 11. The only difference was that Kobe Miner started instead of Conor Gallagher. After the disaster class Conor Gallagher had against Slovenia, there was no way Gallagher was going to start. Gallagher shouldn't sniff the pitch, if I'm being completely honest with you guys. I don't even know why Gallagher is even in the squad. But putting that to a side, England, looked, uh, England really struggled at the attack in this game. And you could just tell by the fact that England were so poor in this game, guys. Let me just show you guys this stat right here, guys. This stat right here, guys. England had 16 shots, 2 on target. And in that first half, England had 6 shots, no on target. Slovakia got the goal there, shots. Great, great combination there. Great, great assist there. And you're thinking to yourself, is Slovakia really going to knock out England in the 25th minute? You know, great assist there from Strelich. The England defense, I don't know what the defense was doing. Terrible defending there from Walker, from Pickford. And it, it was just horrible defending there. A, a gay as well. And it was just terrible defending there. And then England, they tried to respond. And they just had nothing in the ha half time. Then the second half, they started off great. You know, great goal there from Foden, but it was clearly offside. And uh, you could tell that England needed to make some changes. And England finally brought a change. I brought Cole Palmer. And brought Eze, and you could tell England were really starting to get desperate for that goal. There in the 80th minute, I think Declan Rice had an effort um, that hit the post, and England still struggling, man, still, still struggling, guys. And then finally, at the last minute of the game, 95th minute, I think it was like six minutes at a time, Drew Bellingham scores a fantastic overhead kick, a bicycle kick, in the 95th minute. You guys, you can't write the script out, guys. You can't write the script. And the fact that Bellingham did an individual brilliant goal was fantastic. Then in extra time, um, England finally got the goal there. Great goal there from Harry Kane. Uh, great assist there. And England finally did the comeback, man. They finally did the comeback. Great assist there from Tony. Tony came on, uh, had an impact. And Marguerite as well got the assist there. And then that's how it ended. You know, in the second half, extra time, uh, Slovakia did have some chances uh, to, to draw level, but it wasn't to be. And that's how the game finished. So... For England, as a sad man, very, very underwhelming, very, un very much the bare minimum. And I think for Southgate, you have to make this decision. And I say this before, guys, I'm going to continue to say this again. You cannot start Foden as a left winger. If you want to start Foden, you either put him as a number 10 or you bench him. Foden cannot be your left winger. You cannot start Foden as a left winger. It's just a waste. Because Foden, for me, what makes him so good is his what he does centrally. I don't think he's able to beat his man 1v1, make those duels. He's just not that guy. So if you want to play Foden, you got to play him at number 10 or you got to you got to put him on the bench. I thought Kobe Minder was amazing the day. He had a fantastic game. And I think for England in particular, man, they have to address this attack because soccer for me has been really underwhelming as well. And you have to give like, do you give credit? Do you, do you think Palmer should start now? I feel like Palmer should start. Uh, Palmer should start. And then obviously Tony, uh, maybe could come off the bench as they as well. You know, they had an impact. And for England, as I said, man, just a very underwhelming. And for England, the big issue for them is now they're going to be playing against Switzerland. Switzerland is a team that is much better than Slovakia. And as, as much as I want to give Slovakia a lot of praise, I do need to call them out. Because Slovakia, for me, as good as they were, they needed to go for the second goal. They needed to go for the second goal. And this is kind of what I saw early in the Euros, in the group stage, in particular Slovakia, is that they were so good in the first half but in the second half, they really didn't look that great. And that's why issue, my issue with Slovakia is that you look at the second half statistics right here. They were not particularly great in the second half. Now, I understand that they're their inferior team. You have to go defensive. I understand that. I get that. But at the same time, it, it's just not that. It, you just It's just not sustainable. And you're going to concede a goal if you go super defensive. And I think for Slovakia, they need to have some more attack-minded in, out input in the second half. They needed to go more aggressive. 
um, and not be as defensive. So that's kind of my issue with Slovakia. Uh, but yeah, for uh, for England, as I said, man, it's a, it's a critical win for them. And for England, as I said, man, what's that attack going to be? Because I think the defense is good, although Gway is going to be suspended. Gway is going to be suspended for the quarterfinal match. So who's going to fill in that center back position? I would imagine it would have to be Lewis Dunk. It would have to probably be Lewis Dunk, um, probably, or maybe you start Joe Gomez, although I don't rate Joe Gomez that highly. So you probably have to start Dunk. And then that attack, you, you can, I, I, for me, this is my idea. This is... If I was Southgate, this is the lineup I would go for. I would go for Trippier. I, I would go for Trippier at left back because I don't think Shaw is still fit. And by the way, guys, Sako was playing a left back earlier. Sako was playing left back in this game. It was crazy. That's how desperate England were for a goal. Anyways, Pickford and goal. And then Trippier at left back, although Trippier is now injured. So I think Shaw, if Shaw is available, then you should start him in the quarterfinals. But if Shaw is still not available, then I guess, I guess you got to start Joe Gomez. Then Joe Gomez, then Dunk, then Stones, then Walker. At the midfield of Rice and Minor. I thought Minor was amazing the day. He was fantastic. For me, England's best player. I thought Minor was incredible. You got to start Minor. At the left wing, I'm going to start Palmer. Uh, Cam, I'm going to start Bellingham. At the right wing, I'm going to start Saka and Kane up top. So that would be my England 11. But knowing Southgate, he probably will keep the same, except maybe you put in Lewis Dunk. He'll probably just change the left back or center back. So for Garrett Southgate, man, you got to you gotta bench vote. Is he going to bench vote? I don't think he is. And for Bellingham, as I said, man. Huge, huge goal for him. Because, like, let's be real, guys. Before the goal, Bellingham didn't have a good game. Bellingham did not have a good game. But now that he scored that goal, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, that was such a clutch goal that it, everyone's going to forget about his bad performance. That goal is going to forgive everyone. And it was an incredible goal. Incredible goal, man. Incredible goal. Now, let's talk about Spain for Georgia 1, guys. Spain. Georgia took the early lead there. London Mard. Got an own goal there. Made bad defending there from Spain. A bit of an unlucky situation. Jordan, the counterattack. And then Rodri equalized. Great, great goal there from Rodri. Fantastic goal there. Nico Williams got the assist there. Rodri scored a banger. And then the second half, Fabian Ruiz scored a nice header there from the Yamal. Putting that cross into the box. And then um, Nico Williams scored. A great assist there from Fabian Ruiz. And then Yazabel finds Daniel Omo to make it 4-1. Guys, Spain were cruise control in this game. And I think for Spain, my the, concern, the only issue I have with Spain is their attack. Because I feel like for Spain, they're just not clinical. Is Mar Marata is just not clinical enough for Spain. That's the issue. Because Nico Williams is good. Nico Williams is great. Yamal is great. But they got to get the striker. And guys, Georgia had some chances in the counterattack. Ge Georgia could have easily scored two or three goals. And there were some good chances for Georgia to score. But it's just the issue is Spain's defense is very suspect. I still don't rate Spain's defense that highly. I still think Laporte and La Namar are a liability. They just haven't been tested yet. And I think that game against Germany will probably be the first real test for the Sp Spanish back line. Because, let's be real, they haven't really been tested. The only team that actually really tested them was probably Croatia. And maybe to some extent Albania. But really, like, for for Spain, as I said, man, it's just a huge win. And I think for Spain, they have to hope that Marantz is clinical. Because I just feel like Yamal, for me, as good of as a player he is, guys, Yamal just isn't that guy for goals. He just isn't that clinical. And obviously, Nico Williams, he's a great player and all. What is also kind of concerning for Spain, in my opinion, is that Pedri has not really been great in this tournament. Pedri has been kind of underwhelming this tournament so far in the Euros. I am yet, yet to see uh, Pedri being great because Nico has been amazing. Yamal has been great. Rodri has been great. Fabi Ruiz has been great. Carvel has been great. Cucurella has been great. Like everyone else, they haven't really been that great. So for Pedri, as I said, I hope he could grow into the tournament because I do think Spain will need him in the latter stages, especially when they go up against the higher quality nations like the likes of, you know, Germany. France, and Portugal. And I think for Spain, as I said, man, it's just a great win for them. And I think for Georgia, as I said, they can bow with their heads held high because they made it to the round of 16 for the first time ever in an international tournament. And I think they should they can build upon this. And I think for Georgia, let's see if they can try to qualify for the World Cup because now that's the next ambition. Can they qualify next for the next World Cup? That will be an incredible achievement for them. And for Georgia, as I said, man, you got to give you got to give them a, a huge respect for making the knockout stage. And for Spain, as I said, man, they have to hope that they, they have to make sure that Morata is clinical because Morata isn't clinical. I'm not sure if Spain can win the Euros. I'm not sure if Spain can win the Euros. And they got to make sure that defense, either, we'll see how good that defense is against Germany. That also kind of concerns me. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Um, please let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like I said, guys, um, I hope you guys did enjoy this analysis. And please let me know if there's any major talking points in the comments below because I'm sure there probably is. And we're guys, tomorrow we're going to be doing our day three 
of the Euros. We'll have France versus Belgium and Portugal versus Slovenia in the round of 16. So I hope you guys did enjoy. And I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.